we looked at sacrifices sacrifice being something that we willingly give up or something that we take on um again um uh, you know sacrifices can be you know fleshly um sacrifices can be spirit led right we might uh, you know our motive for sacrifice uh, also uh, can be very different in the sense uh, you know it, it can be motivated by fear motivated by uh, motivated by whatever you know uh, because of uh, pressure right? motivated by guilt so you know what is the motivation for sacrifice you know it's it's good to think about that you know as a leader because uh, am i sacrificing something because of fear or because of uh, uh, because of guilt um you know what is the what is the real reason uh, why i'm the why for my sacrifice uh, it's important to to uh, understand that that our motive be pure that our motive be um uh led by god right and uh, when we make those sacrifices right so so th- that way uh it'll be in line with god wants it'll be um it won't be something that we do in order to win the appreciation of people win the accolades of people right uh win the applause of people and not to just feed our own sometimes our own brokenness you know we want appreciation uh because we are insecure right we want people to say hey that was that was great or that was that was a very noble act um because we we just feed off that right it could happen because of some kind of a like emotional need some brokenness inside so very important to uh to to um uh, to also you know think about what is the motive what is the motivation for sacrifice you know as we sacrifice um something in as leaders to think about that okay um okay let's move on and um let me just share the notes okay so the the next thing that we see is um as leaders to be an example okay so which means that uh, as leaders um like we we might be verbally uh giving instructions maybe um uh, you know imparting information knowledge building people um but it's very important and crucial that we lead by example which means that what we are instructing others is it seen in us the ex- expectation that we want from people right, is it seen in us so are we modeling the kind of life that we are expecting from others that we are instructing others to live right um as a servant leader we see this in the lord jesus so you know uh, in that very act of uh, washing the feet of his disciples john chapter 13 12 to 15 so when he had washed their feet taken his garments and sat down again he said to them do you know what i have done to you you call me teacher and lord you say well for so i am if i then your lord and teacher have washed your feet you also ought to wash one another's feet for i have given you an example that you should do as i have done to you right so i'm sure this stuck in the disciples mind and whenever they were they thought about serving whenever they thought about the lord jesus leading by example this would have been there foremost in their memory that yeah i saw the lord wash my feet and uh, you know this this would have been there even after the lord ascended and this would have been there over and over again playing on in their minds so the lord did this and he said i have given you an example right so he led by example and he said 
you need to do this. You need to serve one another. So the things that we, the precepts or the principles that we are uh, expounding, that we are teaching, uh, and maybe that, uh, you know, whatever we are instructing, you know, are we leading by example? Now, that's a very important question because leading by example makes our leadership very authentic, very real. Right? It takes away all superficiality in the way we lead. It takes away all the uh, all the hypocrisy out. It takes away everything out. It makes you an authentic leader. When people say, when people see that you're talking and you're living the same thing, then they want to follow you. you know, they want to listen. They want to give you that space um, or give you the permission to speak into their lives. Right? Uh, but if they don't see that, if there's a mismatch between the words we speak and uh, or what we or what we profess, you know who we are, and if there's a mismatch between the way we live our lives, then definitely it's a uh, it's it talks it, it it it's very hollow. Right? There's no authentic uh, authenticity in that, and it is true that our actions speak very loud and louder than our words. Even though our words are what we hear, people are able to hear the physical organ of ears, but what they will actually be impacted by in their hearts much deeper than the words that they hear are the actions. Right. And if the uh, if the words we speak and the and, and our actions match, if they are one and the same, then it's a very powerful message that is being communicated. Right. So one uh, needs to lead by example. So there's no dichotomy. There's no mismatch between what a person is saying and what a person is doing. What a leader is saying and what a leader is doing. Right. Now. Now I'm sure we have seen in you know certain setups, maybe in an organization where people might say something and do something, and people will and do something else, and people would still be compelled to do it because of the kind of authority that the person leads, a uh, lead person has, or because of uh, you know the consequence of not really uh, you know carrying out the task. So, so but the but the motivation is is that you've lost the person. You know, the motivation why that person does it is because of okay, I need to do this, uh, irrespective of you know how what that person is. Uh, I better do it because otherwise there will be consequences, right? So, so they might do it, but they might not really follow the person, or they that person has lost the uh, ability to influence others, right? Because uh, it, it's it's not an authentic life. Right. So the Lord Jesus, he modeled his life. He led by example. And what we serve, uh, what we see in First Timothy chapter four and verse twelve is that um, you know, Paul's instruction to Timothy. Now uh, Timothy is, is again a leader, right? He is the leader in the church, and he's leading a mixed group of people. Um, uh, he, you know, he's he's leading um, uh, yeah, he's leading people who are older than him. Um, and he is a young person. You know, if you if you actually look at First Timothy four and uh, sorry, First Timothy chapter five, um, we see the kind of people who are there. You know, the the kind of people whom he's leading. You know, it says, uh, like Paul says, do not rebuke an older man. Um, you know, uh, older women, younger women, uh, younger men, widows. Um, so all these kinds of people are there, and then elders. Who are uh, you know who are actually ministering alongside, and uh, and so on, right? So all these kinds of you know it's it's a group of uh, you know varied demograph, uh, you know varied age and everything. So so they are there, and Paul gives this example, uh, this instruction to Timothy in verse twelve, First Timothy four and verse twelve. He says, "Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers." And he lists out certain things. Be an example in word. Be an example in conduct. Be an example in love. Be an example in spirit. Be an example in faith. Be an example in purity. 
okay um so some of these things that he says word behavior love spirit you can say you know out of our innermost being even the motives and everything be an example in faith the the the, the kind of faith that you have the kind of faith that you live um in purity everything be an example and that word their example uh, is really a word which means pattern right a pattern and um, you know i worked for a, a the, my last assignment was with a garment uh, manufacturing company and it was i worked for the retail side uh, um in a business so uh, you know we we had these visits to the factory and they they would uh, show us you know how things are done how these jeans are done you know um, uh, tailored and how these uh, you know uh, shirts are done and th- there is there is one pattern right uh, for every design that comes out there is one pattern for every size actually you know if you call it um, like small medium large extra large whatever double xl there is a pattern for each of that and that pattern is something that uh, you need to follow very carefully and uh, there is this master who they call as a master tailor or a, you know he's the one who who gives that pattern and uh, the measurement everything you know measurement of the cuff the measurement of the sleeve the measurement of uh you know where the, the 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 placement of the buttons and and everything the kind of buttons the, the all the embellishments that go into that that fabric everything you know is um, is is detailed out and uh the it's mass produced but it's based on that pattern so if there's something wrong with the pattern then the the entire production the entire production run is ruined because of this pattern which was faulty right this pattern which uh, which had some some mismatch there maybe a sleeve was missing whatever you know this pattern so uh, now paul says you know to timothy you know be an example okay knowing that timothy is young knowing that timothy is uh, has his limitations has his fears even you know paul writes to him and he says you know um, god has not given us a spirit of fear in the next episode right he says but of power and love and a sound mind don't be ashamed all that so he has his limitations but with all that to be a pattern to be a pattern to be an example that others can follow that others lives can you know to be a role model okay. now as leaders we are called to be role models to be patterns that others can pattern their life after so um you know if you're in a spiritual leadership it goes without saying that saying that well you are influencing others right with your life with uh, with the teaching uh, with the ministry that you do um and you know uh, in 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 all other ways uh, you know people are uh, you are setting an example that right? people are following people are watching observing and some of the things that we don't say but the way we are actually speak a lot right um because people are observing yes they would be uh, what is more visible or what is more uh you know uh, on display is uh, you know what you're doing but you know who you are how you are as a person is also speaking louder okay so so the lord jesus led by example like his is what he does and everything is there but you know, who he was as a person his compassion his love everything you know uh, the, the way he served everything is an example to us and so also our lives are an example so the the so when we live a life when we model our life uh, then we are setting the right example for you know who was there it's uh, and sometimes our you know maybe the lord will increase our scope of influence or the sphere of influence right um according to his will and ways he says you know maybe increases the scope Uh, the sphere of influence uh, maybe to to nation maybe to nations so the greater the responsibility right to to be that example now again to be an example doesn't mean that um, 
you know we live a life that's paranoid we live a life constantly checking introspecting and uh, you know uh, just inward looking all the time you know am i doing it right, right am i saying it right it's it's not that right? the lord has called us to and released us uh, into freedom right? when the holy spirit leads us he leads us into truth truth will liberate us right with all our uniqueness in personality in speech and everything the lord has actually liberated us right it's not to put a leash on us and to say that okay this is one size fits all you know we we come with our our own you know personalities we come with our own likes and dislikes and and the lord releases us the lord delights over us right and to be who we are to be released to be who we are and uh, and as we continue to be works in progress to be you know to be examples right and um, and and the thing is this you you may not know who is watching who is observing who is uh, you know looking up to you right we we think okay these are people who are looking up to us you know maybe we we think maybe it's a formal setting and we say okay these are people who are looking up to us oh i better be on my best behavior <laughs> you know uh oh here's this class uh, maybe i i know i hope to i want to say the say good things and you know say the right things but the thing is that even in a very different kind of setting there are people who are observing there are people who are watching and you'd be very surprised like it could be your peers it could be your superiors right it could be uh it could be you know uh, your subordinates it could be anyone and i was very very uh, surprised when you know at a farewell party uh, i always had this impression that my boss was not very happy you know because i you know i was not there i was not like you know everyone else right i was not there um you know uh, at the I, i was there of course for the parties but i'd be the first one to leave right and i would not you know i would not drink and so on so it's very very unhappy that uh, with my fresh lime soda and coke and all that so um so there will be many times you know i'll say you know jk you know jk you have to today you have to we have done this today you have to drink or you know and there were other things you know other things like um, like doing a sale you know just tell him tell him something and get the sale and um, and when that is not done of course they would be very unhappy you know um so so i always had the feeling maybe he's not too happy with me but then at the farewell you know he he i noticed that um uh he, he apparently he never used to give farewell and all uh, all resignations were actually extremely bad people left with uh, you know uh, with with a bad taste in their mouth because it was always uh, it was always uh, uh, very um, uh, very messy right the resignations um letters of experience he would not give so it was it was uh, you know is that kind of a person so they were very surprised when they said okay this is a fair we'll get together and in the in the when some of the things that he shared then i realized that hey i was just being me you know in some of these scenarios i was just being me uh to the best of my ability but these things made a big difference to him and uh, for him to point that out and to share that well, i was i was humbled right to see that god you know this is how one can be and it's not like i was trying to be someone but i was just being me living the life that comes out of knowing god and you know that made a difference right so you don't know you know each one of you each one of us in this class you don't know who is observing what but you be you you follow the lord and uh, diligently and um, you know let your let your thoughts let your words let your actions come out of that life now come out of that zoe kind of life the god kind of life that he has already put in you and let it be a natural overflow right may the work of the spirit may the work of his word in us 
let it just naturally transform. So our speech is seasoned with salt, you know, our, it's gracious and our, uh, our personalities are shaped by the Holy Spirit. Our minds are renewed by the, by the words, the word of God, the truth of God, which bringing life and maybe be examples, right? It's very different from trying to be someone in a very, you know, very artificial setting and being someone else outside of that. There's so much pressure, right? Whereas if we are who we are, who God has made, it, made us to be, and uh, in, in any setting, you know, we are liberated to be who we are. We are liberated to be examples, right? Uh, to be role models, right? Okay, let's move on to another uh, thing, uh, another aspect of leadership. Now, this is this is a big one, right? This is a very big one. As a leader, to trust our team, okay? Like uh, someone has said, you know, this whole thing of sacrifice, uh, trust. Right? It's it's a good idea till you have to trust. Sacrifice, great idea till you have to sacrifice. Forgiveness, uh, well, wonderful, very noble till you have to forgive. Then you realize that hey, this is working against my flesh. My flesh is rebelling. My flesh is um, still seems to be alive in these areas. Right. So as a leader, to trust. Um, our team now, especially when trust is broken. Now, when trust is broken, it, it does take time to rebuild trust. You know, let's be, uh, you know, let's be real. It, it does take time to to rebuild that trust. But trust can be rebuilt. Whatever trust is broken can be rebuilt. Right? But the Lord Jesus, He trusted. He forgave. He even, you know entrusted uh, that person who broke the trust. There were many. And uh, he entrusted them with the, with, the, with the work of carrying out the gospel. Right? Luke 10 and verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. He sent them, 70 others also, he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Um, they, this was a team, and uh, this was a fairly big team. They went out, he taught them, he had seen what he, he, he had done, and they went out and uh, preached the good news of the kingdom. Um, they went out, healed the sick, signs, wonders, everything. Um, you know, they did, and when it came to um, him dying on the cross, we see that most of them had deserted, and most of, most of them had gone. Right? Um, in fact, uh, very few people who are still at the cross, and we see that um, the Lord entrusting them again, entrusting the disciples again, with the co and commissioning them again. Right? Um, Luke 24, 47, 48, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem and Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. Like they had seen it and they had they had uh, you know missed it. Um, but then the Lord again interesting. And this conversation with Peter is so precious. Um, John 21, 15 to 17. Okay, when they had eaten breakfast. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. And uh, he said to him again a second time. Okay, this is John 21, just a minute. Um, okay, John 21, 15. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, I'm sorry. So he said to them again, said to him again, um, a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Jesus was, Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. 
you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Fine. For the three times that he actually denied the Lord, here the Lord is, you know, reiterating and reinstating um, uh, Peter back to that place of ministry and is saying, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Right. Um, so, well, if uh, lead, if the Lord Jesus led by example, then who are we to not follow his example? Okay. Now, the question is, you know, so do I blindly trust someone after they have broken my trust? Right. Do I again entrust them with the responsibilities when they have actually, you know, not carried them out? What do I do? Right. So we see in Peter that. Um, well, Peter repented, right? Peter repented. He realized that what he had done was wrong. And he came back. And the Lord did not hold that wrong against him. So that's the thing. You know, they, Peter did repent. And, uh, and because he had missed it once, uh, the Lord did not say, okay, now I cannot trust this guy with the you know, salvation plan for the entire world, how can I trust him? Right? The Lord did not come to that conclusion. The Lord saw something which was which was in him, right? beyond the surface. The Lord some, saw something which was in him. Saw the uh, saw saw the Father's will for him. You know, I'm just my opinion, you know. Saw the Father's will for him. Saw God's plan for him and what who he could be in God who he could be when he would be filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and who he could be and what he could do when he was led by the Holy Spirit. Probably Jesus saw that, right? Going beyond uh, that moment's actions you know, or going beyond the action of the past, he saw something uh, which was far valuable in him and he entrusted it with a, a reinstated, him into ministry and and said feed my lambs and you know tend my sheep and feed my sheep and i'm sure these words meant a lot to peter um and and would have kind of brought in that healing and restoration if he was if there was any kind of shame and any kind of remnants of guilt um you know this would have been this would have wiped away that and um, the words of Jesus wiping away all that, all that fear and all that shame and all that guilt, and reinstating that, uh, uh, and reinstating uh, him to ministry. You know, this would have the words of the Lord, the action of the Lord, would have done a lot to Peter, right? Brought in a lot of healing and restoration. So, um, well, in ministry, it is true, it is possible. Uh, it is a fact that uh, you know there could be you know people who break your trust, right? They uh, you know you can't say there could be, there will be, right? But uh, but the thing is to go before God and uh, and of course pour out our hearts and uh, pray for that person and um, observe and see. Uh, has that person come to a place of repentance? You know, restore that person even, and uh, uh, restore that person um, to wholeness. Uh, well, it would definitely involve correction. It will definitely involve talking about what had gone wrong, um, and uh, also uh, the person realizing and repenting and coming to that place of repentance, and and then us. You know, when that happens, to go ahead and trust again, right? Um, so to be able to trust, even when uh, trust was broken, uh, to be able to restore, to encourage, and to restore that person to the task that is ahead. You know, that is an example that the Lord Jesus um, left for us. So, so we see all these um, examples of leadership. Um, by no means, you know, uh, easy. Uh, it's definitely not an easy walk 
when we do it in our own strength, maybe temperamentally certain things we can to some extent, but we it requires walking with him. It requires hearing his voice. Um, it requires uh, putting to death our flesh. And uh, it requires being renewed in our spirit um, and being filled with his spirit uh, to be able to walk, like to be able to lead like Jesus did. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. I think we'll we'll stop here. The next topic is about uh, vision, and um, to uh, you know a very important aspect of leadership, and uh, it's it's something that uh, we need to uh, have a firm grip, grasp of. Sorry, firm, I have a firm grasp, firm grip on. Uh, for us to lead effectively, so we'll we'll look at that uh, afresh in the next class. So we'll I guess we'll stop here, um, but I just want us to you know um, look at these seven aspects again, maybe in our personal time uh, to see and to really meditate and say, okay, God, you know, Lord, you've left us this um, uh, example uh, as leader uh, as a leader, and uh, you've called me to be a leader. And uh, you know how can I how can I fulfill this? Right? Help me to fulfill this. Help me to step into your in, into your way, into your path, into your shoes, right? And to be a to be an effective leader. Okay. So um, yeah, we'll stop here and we'll continue next class. Um, just a minute. Uh, okay. So uh, you guys have a great weekend. God bless. I know we're just finishing a little early, but um, yeah. Um, so have a great weekend. We'll catch up next class uh, more on Christian leadership. Right. Thank you. God bless.